The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Quirky Dog Podcast, inspired by some of the quirkiest dogs you can ever imagine and the owners who love them. This podcast is brought to you by the quirky couple themselves, Scott and Jess Williams. Their aim is to educate and entertain. Here's Scott and Jess. Welcome, guys, and happy Wednesday. We have a very special guest on here today. We have Andrea Balzarini Lucas, and she actually grew up with Scott. In yeah, Rockport. and um, just keep my fingers crossed that we don't get into the old stories. <laughs> <laughs> and and did, did we actually grow up? <laughs> That's the question. You you much more so than him. Uh, Andrea sends uh, text me photos of myself from the early eighties. <laughs> he looks the same, I'm just like, a little bit more crap. hair, a little more hair, and a little more muscle. But he he hasn't done too bad for himself. But Andrea is our first rock porter. Scott was um. You were born in what Gloucester? Yeah, okay. And uh, he was born in Gloucester. Addison but Gilbert. He lived in Rockport for most of his childhood, and. Uh, we're, it's a rock porter day. I feel like yeah. the, the stand-in. All right, but first, we're going to start with quirky tip of the day. <laughs> and this is so cute. Also, this is their own pig. That's this is Lacey's pig. They I brought know. a pig with them. <laughs> they have a Catahoula, a Catahoula mix named Lacey, who we've actually even done some training with back in the past. And she brought her own pig. I'm so impressed. The quirky tip, though, is if you live on Cape Ann, Gloucester, Gloucester Rockport, or Rockport, Essex. I'm learning about all of this with... Uh, my Massachusetts history. Once you go over the bridge, check out North Shore Vet Hospital. That is where Andrea is currently. And Andrea is coming on today kind of as an authority of someone who's worked in a vet hospital for the past decade on and off. She's done some dog walking and everything else. But we kind of want to talk about what are the best practices for owners to help these people that are at these veterinary offices, whether it be the vet techs or the staff or something else, because things are getting a little bit harder to handle. Would you agree? Very yeah. Very much. So what have you seen from when you first started, maybe until today, some types of differences and some types of things that have popped up? Just give us a little rundown of that. Well, I think the biggest change was with COVID. Yeah. When things shut down, everybody was home, everybody adopted more pets. <laughs> the shelters were empty. Woohoo! <laughs> yep. So it put a lot of burden on the veterinary hospitals, the staff, um, to get everybody seen yeah. when they needed, whether yeah. it was wellness, sick, you name it. And being curbside, it was frustrating for the uh, client not to be able to come in with their yeah. pet, you know. So Are you guys still curbside now? No, we do let um, the clients come in, okay. one person with the visit. Okay. Yeah, we still have curbside check-in, so we don't have people in and out of the lobby throughout yeah. the day. So we're still maintaining a um, little more, a little more control. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Has it helped? I mean, does, do these protocols? Well, when you guys were taking the dogs in, um, I mean, the dogs were probably more comfortable once they were just with you guys individually. How did that look as far as everything? It did. For the most part, it, it worked very well for um, to, to get the exams done. Um, without the client in there, the dogs or cats normally behaved better. Yeah. Um, the exams went a lot quicker. You were able to get people in and out faster. But it was you know difficult for the client not to be yeah, there. You know? definitely. And sometimes maybe it's even the owner's maybe fear or whatever else about or concern about the dog or the cat that's projecting onto the animal in a sense. Exactly. So how is it going with just one party in with the animal? Is that yeah, a little bit easier than a whole family? Yeah, it's, it's much better. I mean, okay. the exam rooms are small. There's not a lot of, lot of room for four or five people besides yeah. the vet and the technician. Yeah. So yeah, it's going really well for the Good. last year or so. Good. Nice. And as far as vet tech stuff goes, because you were a vet tech for how many years? Six. Okay. So what are some best practices? Because I feel like, especially on the podcast, sometimes we're like, oh, the vet's this, oh, the vet's that. Like, we're not anti-Western vet. Like, we all need our friggin' Western vets. They have saved our dogs' lives over and over and over again. But we want people to be able to help the veterinary staff as much as possible. Right. And you also want to have this, like, kind of synergistic relationship with your vet, in a sense. Like, if it's not exactly. working... Go to another office. It's not a one size fits all. You or know? stay in the same office but change vets. Yes, because exactly. a lot of most people. Most of the offices now have several vets. Yeah, a right. lot of people do that. So, what are some things um, from your teching days that you want to impart on our listeners and our viewers that would make you know the animals' journey a little bit easier? That would make your jobs a little less stressful. Like, just give us a little lowdown here. Um, just communicate 
clearly, you know, make sure you provide the right information when you're checking in. Go over everything with the technician before you see the vet. Um, be patient with the staff. <laughs> and be uh, kind. <laughs> we're going to get everybody seen, yeah. you know, accordingly. Sometimes you'll see other people going in and out, and you've been here longer waiting in the parking lot, say, but, you know, you don't know if there was a sick animal coming down or an emergency that came in. So patience is huge yeah. for the client to understand. Um, again, just be... You know, make sure you're prepared with all of the problems that you need to talk to the vet about. Um, know what you're there for. Yeah. You're here for wellness, vaccines, blood work. Um, you know, just, I think just being more prepared makes it easier for everybody. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And the whole thing, like Andrea said, you don't always know what's going on. Like if your wait is a little bit longer, sometimes that's one thing. And you guys are busy. Every vet in the country, no matter Swamped. where anyone's living, yeah, yep. busy. It is a tough industry. Like, it is hard to be in the veterinary industry. And it's not like it's you get out of vet school and you're making, you know, half a million dollars a year. Like, it is a hard journey for people. So we need to be kind to our vets. We need to be kind to our vet techs. We need to be kind to our veterinary staff. And we need to be freaking grateful. Yeah. Like, you guys are the ones that are saving our animals. Yeah. And we're all in it because we care. Yes, you know? exactly. And That's so you have to take that into consideration that, you know, they're upset, they're angry, they're yelling at us on the phone, but you know what? We just give us your pet. We yeah. want to fix it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, and that's true. I Who's thought you just wanted to rack up a big bill on us. And <laughs> but that is well, true. Well, that too. But come, back, gonna... <laughs> come back with your credit card. Well, I am looking for a raise soon, so come on. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Uh, how many dogs, on average, would you say uh, need a muzzle? You know, for what I've seen, maybe, yeah, if that. Yeah, it's not, if that. Not a, uh, but when the owner's there, it might, that might go up a little bit. Um, sort of. I think the owners appreciate that, that we're not taking them out of the equation. Like, if we can just muzzle your dog, get you, you know, through the exam, everybody's going to be safe. And most of the time, they're fine with that. And also, yeah. you know, hey, we need to take the dog out back just to make it a little easier and safer to get blood. You know, we are going to muzzle the dog. So, you know, and they're most of the time, totally fine. Yeah. Some of them bring their own muzzle. Yeah, I just think it, it's nice to have dogs acclimated to a muzzle regardless mm -hmm. of whether they need it because you never know when you may need it. And if you, the only time the dog sees a muzzle is going to the right. vet, now that's a trigger. The dog's like, oh, shit. Yeah. They got problems coming yeah, down the it, road. Yeah, but it keeps everybody safe. I mean, if a vet gets injured, I think I was saying last month on the podcast, like, they do surgery with these hands, right? Like, oh, this yeah. is a big deal. And you guys, like, we can't be getting all maimed and stuff every day you guys come into work. So the care and the safety of the veterinary clinic as a whole is staff, very important. Sure, yeah, yeah, staff, yeah. Yep. Tell us um, some best practices for the waiting room, because i got to tell you, um, how long ago was, did Jimmy have the avocado pit, you think? Like seven years ago? It was quite a while ago. Yeah, yeah. so Jimmy, I, I don't know. He was on and off sick. He was pooping sometimes, not. It was not like your standard obstruction, right? Like I didn't like first go to my obstruction. So anyway, I brought him to the vet. We're running blood work. It was about five to six days of like me going back and forth to the vet, and I was like, oh, my God, the dog had lost like – eight to 10 pounds. Like it was getting to be an issue. So I, I walked into this local vet and I was like, I'm going to stay here. I want an ultrasound because we did x-rays. Of course, first thing, nothing showed up in the x-ray. I said, I want an ultrasound. She goes, well, you know, it's going to be a, a while. I said, I'll sit here. I sat in that waiting room for six hours. Turned out he did have an avocado pit in his stomach. He got operated on that night. But when I was sitting there for those six hours, I really realized like how much interference everyone's playing. You know what I mean? Right. Like kids are running in and they're running up to a dog and then people are getting up behind the desk where they're supposed to be taking in clients and kind of fielding that and dogs are meeting. I mean, you guys do a lot there. So let's yeah. talk a little bit about some waiting room practices and how we can best keep everybody safe from right. what you see. Well, since we um, only allow the client to come in for the exams, if okay. it's an emergency or a lot of diagnostics, we're trying to figure out what's wrong, um, the client will come in for the initial consult and then they're asked to wait outside. Okay. So we're not dealing with the clients, the families, the kids, but the larger emergency vet hospitals do let them come in. Yeah. So their waiting rooms become a little chaotic. Yeah, and before COVID, we used to do it this way. Oh, and some, everybody some, would be sitting. Some practices may go back to that. So what are some practices that you saw that, you know, you would help see, you know, um, past employees helping to keep everybody safe and everybody calm? Like, what are some things that people can do if for some reason you do go to a practice where there are four of you in the waiting room still at the same time? Yeah. Um, if it's a, you know, decent day, nice weather, we do ask people to sit outside. Yeah. You know, we have ch chairs, tables, 
um, canopy to keep them out of the sun. We put water and snacks out for people um, that, so they can sit outside and be comfortable. Bring a book. <laughs> you know, you know, it's, you know, it's a really so busy. a nice tool in the waiting room is the retractable, retractable. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your flexies no. to a minimum. Yeah. No flexies. <laughs> yeah. No, it's Not true allowed. because, you know, you, you get in, you put the dog on the scale. Ideally, you go right to the exam room. But if it's getting hectic at some of these practices and everybody's playing it a little bit differently right now, it is like a safety risk. Yeah. And you have to be mindful of your own animal. Like, it's crazy how often I see, like, someone paying... And they have no idea what their dog's doing. You know right. what I mean? Like, they're not even in the headspace that they have a dog that's on a leash. They got done with the exam. The hard part's over. Like, it, and if that's you, no offense. That's fine. Yeah. But throw your dog in the car and then yeah. come back in and pay. Like, and a lot of people are doing that now. Dogs, cats, you know, I'm yeah. going to bring them out in the car and I'll come back. And, yeah. and again, we have uh, people's payment info on file. So oh, nice. When they're ready to leave and check out, we have their email address, we process their payment, send them an invoice, and they don't even have to stop and interact. Oh, that's nice. I just went um, yeah. to the vet with a client to a local vet, and they came out with the little um, like card readers they have yep. at the restaurants. It yep. was so great. I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh. They like came out. You did the payment exactly. right at the car. It was awesome. Yep. All right, we're going to go to break super quick, and when we get back, we're going to unhash a little bit more of this. Want to keep up with all the latest from the Quirky Dog Podcast like me and Murphy here? Then make sure you head on over to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Or if you prefer to listen to the madness, go on over to iTunes or Spotify and follow the Quirky Dog Podcast. And hey, while you're there, leave a rating and review and let them know what you think of the show. Until then, keep it quirky. Water. All right, we're doing a lot of... <laughs> We're taking our headsets off. You get rock porters on the podcast. Nobody listens. We're, we're getting lighters. We need beverages. Everything's going We were just talking crazy. about a keg party. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Johnson's Quarry. Oh, my God. You were the good girl at Rockport compared to my husband. Oh, my gosh. She's uh, naughty. Oh, that's, uh, that's she, awesome. She was on a par with me. What do you think? Oh, about? no one was on a par with you. You were terrible. You're lucky no, you're she alive. She was documenting everything. I was going to say, I have pictures from all these events, so I don't know you what were to there. say you about You remember that. him, though, more so than he does. All right, so... Dogs, cats, you guys see other animals besides dogs and cats at the vet, right? We do uh, to a limit. We used to have a, a veterinarian who did all exotics. Okay. So we do see minimal exotics right now. Um, unfortunately, we have to refer to like a larger hospital with yeah. more staff. Yeah. Yeah, right um, now. So, but the vets that do see more of those types of animals, what is kind of some best practices for them? Because I feel like the cats and the exotics, they're less used to traveling than the dogs, right? right. Like they're not going into the car to go to the post office like Baby Rover is. Right. <laughs> well, we do a lot of um, uh, the Petco pets. Okay. They, if they're sick, like hamsters, ferrets, yep. guinea pigs. And so basically it's curbside. Okay. Bring us your animal. We'll take it out back, evaluate it, and then And are the owners of those types of species a little more willing to relinquish the animal over Absolutely. and be like, oh, take, because yeah. they don't really know how to do That's the care, right? That's what we've right? seen. Yeah. They're, they're very forgiving because they know that they, we're they able can, to get them seen yeah. quickly. Yeah. So they'll do pretty much whatever they yeah. can. Is yeah. it easier to handle the pet co gerbils and stuff than the dogs, um, or it just all depends? It all depends. If it's an emotional support gerbil, <laughs> yes. then it's probably yes. easier Some to Some of handle. those little critters are snarky. They bite. Yeah. They're, they're they quick. They Yeah. 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 So what about nails? Because I feel like the vets have had to take on, and the veterinary staff has had to take on this monumental task of getting nails done. Right. Is that something that's pretty common? So for the longest time, all Thank of you. our technician appointments that we have scheduled throughout the day were all booked with nail trims, yeah. uh, cats, dogs, you name it. And then it just got overwhelming. We couldn't get animals in for vaccines, blood work. You yeah. know, that You're just like a, a groomer. You're like a, a pedicure. Right. Place. Yeah. So now what we do is the technicians that have free time before or after work, they schedule these appointments on their own oh, nice. through the client and off hours. And so we help them, and it also helps the technicians financially, a little yeah. bit more money in their pocket. Yeah, definitely. Um, so it so works well. So that's a nice well. way yeah. to do it. So it's not an appointment now for your hospital. Nope. The, the technicians schedule that accordingly based okay. on their time. So you it know, seems to work out well. One thing I noticed the other day, which was surprising, I think it was Rite Aid that we saw the sign where they're doing all the vaccine vaccinations. Clinics. I think for, it was tractor supply maybe. Yeah, maybe no, Rite No, no, it was too. Rite Aid. Yeah. And they had all of you know the COVID and the flu, and sure. then they had dog vaccines. Really? Yeah. You bring a dog to Rite Aid and get... Yeah. So everyone's jumping on the bus. We should do vaccines. What the hell? We'll just right out of the back of the <laughs> well, car. Yeah. You, you want to <laughs> make sure that your pet We'll just pet put water is... in the syringe. Yeah. What do you need today? Right. There you go. But don't you want to make sure your pet is healthy before you're administering some sort I of vaccine? I wouldn't bring my dog to Rite Aid That's for a why vaccine. we... No, yeah. I'm just saying I saw a sign. I was a little surprised. I know. Well, I think Petco does that too. They have Oh, well, Petco makes clinic, more sense. But they do have somebody on staff that 
No, it's when, oh, uh, overseas. Yeah. 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 I don't yeah. believe they have a veterinarian there, but some of these um, vaccine clinics, they can be a little bit more affordable, but it doesn't necessarily mean like Andrea is saying, you're getting the best care or whatever else. I mean, and there could be some fallout from vaccines too. I yes. mean, um, especially with little ones. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, I'm crazy. Andrea knows this. She had to be my vet tech and Scott. I can vouch yeah. for that also. <laughs> everybody, everybody knows Jess is crazy, but like, I'm really careful about like, if it's rabies day, like I want to kind of, you know, put those other vaccines off a couple of weeks right. because it's amazing to me how many client dogs come in and I'm reading their profiles and it's like, Oh my God, this dog with autoimmune issues got rabies and five other vaccines in the, the same, same day. Thing. Like yep. uh, I'm glad that wasn't on my watch. And that it's a gerbil. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a client dog. We don't take gerbils in. You can go marry somebody else if you want to do that. So talk to people a little bit about what they may see with some sort of vaccine fallout because first time dog owners that have any sort of vaccine reaction, they get really concerned. So exactly. This is like a behind the scenes uh, information we're going to get now. Right. So <laughs> This uh, is standard know, information we're going to get from a professional. When they say, wait outside, it'll be no problem. They're in there giving CPR to the exactly. It doesn't get like that. <laughs> Scott It'll and be fine. Cars. Fluff them up. Send them out. Yeah. Enough. Tell us some of the things that can happen. So with, you know, new puppies, we break and break out and schedule their vaccines, you know, every three to four weeks in between. You never want to over-vaccinate the puppies. Um, even with older dogs, when they come in and they're due for a rabies, distemper, lepto, Lyme, kennel yeah. cough, you name it. Um, you know, maybe two at a time yeah. after they've already been exposed, you know, a, a couple times before that with no reaction. Yeah. Small dogs, sometimes we pre-medicate with an antihistamine yeah. um, or an anti-inflammatory yeah. so that there isn't a, a bad reaction. But um, I would say maybe 5-10% of small animals, small dogs, even cats, uh, we get a call an hour later. You know, Fluffy's home, he's shaking, he's panting, I don't know what to do, and we're like, Come right back. Bring them back. Yeah. Yep. I had a dog when I was a kid that had a really bad reaction to the lepto vaccine, blew up like a Sharpe. And then, I mean, there can be some soreness in yes. the vaccine site. There can be yep. some lethargy. You guys, all these COVID vaccines, everyone that got vaccinated, think about how shitty everybody yep. felt for X exactly. amount of time or days or anything else. So, like, be mindful that that is sometimes something that's going to happen, but also don't just plan, okay, I'm going to take you know, 15 minutes off work to go get vaccinated right. and then throw my dog in a crate for six to eight hours. Yeah, like, no, not a good idea. Yeah. And you think about know. your flea and tick treatments too and your heart guard and all that stuff, doing all that stuff together exactly. sometimes can be a bit much. Right, and with the oral and medication, say, we try to tell them too, like don't give them their heartworm preventative and flea and tick oral at the same time. Yeah. Right. Give a couple days in between because if they do get sick, you want to know what caused that illness. Right. Yes, completely. You know? I just wanted to get a definition. What's, what do you consider small dog? Under 10. Yeah. Yeah. Anything yeah. over 10, you don't, it's, it's still risky, but. Um, yeah. We had that Pomeranian for yeah. years and she was like three and a half pounds. Yeah. So we were always worried about oh, yeah. what was going into her system. And right. Because she couldn't handle any kind of disruption. Even change her diet was yeah. a big friggin' problem yeah. with her, you know. Right. Yeah. 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 What about, let's talk poop. I love talking poop. Oh, I feel yeah, like I'm going to do, poop all I feel day like long, I'm going to do know? like a poop podcast. I was thinking about it this morning. When, when I, I talk poop, dogs you on. get all over my case. We don't want to talk about your poop. We're talking about kid <laughs> poop of clients. Dog poop dogs. is so much more oh fun to talk about. Yeah, I don't need to know. Time for my constitution. I'm freaking, please stop. All right. So diarrhea is a thing. Loose stool is a thing. Yep. It happens. There's so many different forms. Yes. Yep. Um, and like I would say, and maybe this is just me. But sometimes I wait it out like 12 yeah, hours exactly. or so, like maybe depending on how bad it is. And I'm not trying to give advice to anybody out there. Like call your vets. It's fine. But yep. I feel like you guys are fielding a lot of calls that yes. like, oh my God, Lacey like pooped normal. And then there was this little baby drop of blood or she pooped normal. And then the end was loose. Like I feel okay. like there's Lacey, I said, but yep. I, <laughs> any, any dog, right. Rover, we'll a go back little, to Rover. A little G.I. Joe hand came out with <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> At least there's an explanation for it then, right. but it was an odd pun there with G.I. Joe and G.I. track, but whatever. Yeah. I'm glad uh, you picked uh, up on that. Outside <laughs> of that. Um, tell us, for these people who are listening for little tidbits, to be less worried, because we are worried about right. our dogs and right. our cats and our animals. Like, we love them and we want them to be okay. What are some kind of best practices from your point of view and your experience in the industry of how to handle these types of things. So you get these calls all day long. You know, yeah, I came seriously, home from work. Right? Yeah. Yep, just got home from work. All we do is talk poop at the vet yeah. office. All, the, all day long. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I came home from work. My dog has diarrhea. Um, 
exacting fine otherwise. Okay, well, what does it look like? Is it yeah. runny and watery? Is it soft like soft serve ice cream? Is it mucousy like jelly or jello? Well, like yeah. you're trying to get pull this information out of them. You know, Send me a picture. <laughs> did you change their food recently? Did yeah. they have a new treat that you gave them? Did they play with the neighbor's dog? Were they out in the grass eating yeah. rabbit poop? Like there's so many things. Yeah. Um, if the dog's acting fine otherwise, still eating, no vomiting, <clears throat> ride it out. Bland diet. You know, keep away from any treats and, you know, hard kibble, chicken and rice, couple yeah. days. Boil it up. Even, yeah. I, I do boiled hamburgers sometimes Either too. Either any okay? kind of yeah. boiled protein, yeah. drain and it the off. the rice, you can do white or brown, right? Either or. Okay, yeah. It's <laughs> just a filler. I always worry. Yeah. I'm like, oh God, I only have brown rice, but yeah. whatever. I've got yeah. pineapple brown rice. <laughs> not, yeah. the, not the <laughs> stir fry rice that you make. But I mean, really, this is just sometimes part of how we process, how we right. digest. I mean, humans, like you go to the Mexican restaurant, things can get hairy for exactly. a sec. Like, and I feel like... People get diarrhea and it's, or dog, they see their animals with diarrhea and it's just this huge red flag, like, oh my God, like we have to fix this, right. like and, and immediately. For the, the reason being, you know, they come home and it's all over their house. Yeah, well, that's not pleasant. So now I'll the give anxiety you that. <laughs> is different, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? The dog just doesn't have diarrhea, it's everywhere, they got to clean yeah. it, the house smells, it's, yeah. you know, so it's stressful for the yeah. owner. What do I do, yeah. you know? Yeah. You know, we offer, if you want to bring in a sample, we can send it out to the lab yeah. and see if there's anything going on. Nine out of ten times, it's just dietary indiscretion, yeah. a little gastroenteritis, nothing nothing out of the ordinary. One yeah. thing I would add, just as a dog owner, is nobody does this, or very few people do, <clears throat> but you should just check out your dog's poop on a regular basis, just yep. so you have a baseline. So you know what it looks and, like and, normally. And you know that if the dog hasn't gone in two or three days, because exactly. if there's blockage, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the first thing, is that they're not pooping, they're, right. not, they're throwing up water. But you don't. You may not notice that stuff if you're not paying attention right. to that stuff. Right. You know. Believe it or not, most pe people do pay attention to their dog poop. Yeah, more so probably than their own. It, yeah, it's but, creepy, but it, it's good. There we go. Back <laughs> to then the they human can poop. explain it. Most what's people going on. More, pay more attention to their well, dogs I, than you. Let's just put it that way. I, That's why I they have <laughs> clients that they just let their dog out in the backyard every day. Yeah. Like I ask them, yeah. "Did your dog poop?" Well. You know, I, or I had a dog just the other day that is pooping on the walk in the middle of the road. And I'm like, when did the dog poop before that? Did right. the dog have an opportunity to go? Well, I don't know. I, don't I know. put the dog out in the morning, well, but they're not paying true. attention. Sometimes, you know, if you're not scooping the yard regularly or you're waiting a couple of weeks, or they have those companies now that come and scoop too. Like, I mean, how luxurious can I we know. get? But that, I, I'm glad you brought that point up because I can see why if you come home and your house smells like shit and... Your freaking white carpet is like not doing well. I can't see how that does become more of a stressor. So mm -hmm. let's give some best practices for that. If your dog does have loose stool and they're conditioned to a crate, take out the bedding for a second, right? Like that would be my go-to. One thing I found, it's so funny when I was doing the big facility in Fenaris, I would keep our, do our dogs in very kennels, right? Because mm -hmm. like it's easier just to go in and vacuum out hair. But then the client dogs, I would have wire crates. So be conscientious of that too, because like if a dog goes to the bathroom in a very kennel, it's going to be very different than a wire crate. Right. And then if your crate is next to your, you know, gorgeous $10,000 couch, maybe put it in the kitchen on tile floor, like be mindful right. because just because it happened once, that doesn't mean it's over now. Like it could be could, the next 12 right, to 24 hours. So set yourself up for success. You know, maybe do your Netflix watching in the kitchen on tile with the dog that night. Like be conscientious of it because when you're not and you keep having it happen over and over again on your carpeting or your bedding, yeah. I can see the stress. Rising. Exactly. I have another yeah. question that loosely tied into to poop. <laughs> oh loosely. my God, I never should have got him going on the poop. We should, have, we should have done it alone. He was right. A lot of clients um, deworm their dogs on a regular basis. We never deworm our dogs. Our so, puppies, we do. A, a puppy when right. they first get in. <laughs> Yeah, but some people do it almost as a matter of course, well, like our an protocol, annual deworming. We, well, we do an annual fecal check. If your dog right. is fine, you're here for wellness, we want to send the stool out, make sure that there isn't anything going on, especially if they go to boarding, daycare, doggy day, you know, yeah. dog parks. Um, we don't treat, we don't do a basic dewormer unless there's something to treat. It, right. is, it isn't just like, okay, here's your dewormer. You know, no need to year. add another poison for no, no reason. No, not at all. Yeah. And yeah. that is a good thing that we brought up. You guys, if your dog is going to dog daycare or you are going to a place that does have a lot of different dog poop from a lot of different species, you should be doing that regular fecal because yeah. some facilities don't require it. They should, but they don't because they just want to keep the turnover and the money coming in. But like, 
it's quick. Giardia can spread quickly. And just yep. because, especially if you have an older dog, it doesn't mean that they're asymptomatic for it, but they'll be spreading it elsewhere and they may get sick at some point. So the regular fecals are very important. And you guys recommend yearly? Yearly with your yeah. wellness exam. What about puppies? Earlier, more frequently puppies than that? with your first visit. Okay. Um, if you came from a shelter, most likely you've Hopefully. been dewormed, Hopefully. but there's yeah. probably something still yeah. going on. Um, and then six months, and then just your annual after that. Okay. Yeah. Every puppy I have get seems to come with Giardia. Every puppy comes I with mean, Giardia. I mean, just drinking out of water <laughs> off the street, right. and they exactly. pick it up. Or if you're f from a breeder, and there's several different types of dogs there, you know, there's all kinds of different yeah, puppies. Well, it's not client, necessarily that the breeder sucks. It's just a common puppy It just puppy happens. Thing. It really client, is. It's spread very quickly. And client yeah. dogs, we started requiring fecals, honestly, for yeah. when they're under six months, because I'm like, I just need to know beforehand, because then you go back and forth with this, like, oh, is it stress? Oh, is it this? Oh, my God. Like, let me quarantine the yard. It's a whole big to-do. Yeah. So is there anything else that we're missing that we should tell people um, about how not to be pains in the asses at the vet and how to help their animals more? Just, again, be patient, be understanding. Everybody's working, you know, twice as hard, twice as long. We're yeah. doing the same thing over and over. We just, we're doing the best we can to help you help your pet. Yeah. You know, you I'm know. under the impression that most of these vets are driving around in Lamborghinis. <laughs> yeah. now, uh, maybe I'm wrong. No, not in Gloucester. No. <laughs> not no, unless we raise prices it, again. It depends on the practice. Yeah. It depends on the practice. Scott's go-to yeah. is if they have a big statue outside, we don't go and see that one. If they have some big bronze statue erected, yeah. then we, yeah. we move along and we don't do that. And that's true you guys Andrea brought it up right at the beginning but like there are more animals out there to see there are not more vet techs and vet nope. staff and vet assistants and veterinarians like it didn't multiply at the same rate and we don't want to push people out of going into the veterinary industry like yeah. we need we you guys need, we need more staff you know, we need we more people we, to go in the maybe field. we should touch on the emotional side of being a, a tech or a vet because uh, I read an article saying that there was a there was a an unusual amount of suicides with vets Very high in, suicide the, in the rate. industry yes. nationally. And I'm sure that the techs are feeling that same stress, oh, yeah. especially when having to put dogs down, it's a very emotional thing, yep. giving people bad news about cancers. Cause these, these dogs are like our family for sure. It's, you it's know, very I, I difficult. joke all the time about, you know, uh, if someone came to take my dog, there would just be dead bodies all over the outside yeah. of my house. <laughs> now it's half joking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, th there's a strong emotional attachment. When I when yeah. we had to put Gigi down, uh, I mean that it was just I had the it dog for 14 you. years, mm -hmm. and the dog was a total pain in the ass every day I had her, right. and uh, it was the worst day in in the world to, you don't, to put you, her down. So magnify that by sometimes yeah, several times a day, yeah. yeah, maybe a couple times a week, and you know, unfortunately, we have clients that come in that. They don't want to be a part of that. Yeah. They can't see that final, you know, step with their pet. So you guys are so there. So they're, they're here. The dog or cat is afraid. They don't really know who we are. And you know what? You just get down on the floor with them and... Try and Treat make, them it, like your make own. it as easy as make you can it for as them. Easy as yeah. you can. But it's heartbreaking, you guys. They're going through a yeah. lot in these practices. So please be patient. Be kind. Please do not make your freaking, you know prescription food order more important than yeah. the animal that was just euthanized at the last appointment. You never know what's happening. Right. And it reminded me, I went to see our vet um, the other day and uh, Jimmy had some weird thing. Freaking Jimmy, apparently it's a big issue. And she came in literally crying and she was like, just give me a second. Like it was one of my favorites. Yeah. And they are feeling this too. Like it is not easy to make that decision to have to help, you know, an animal to the other side. So please be compassionate and be kind and be nice. Just because, be nice. Yeah, That's all it is. push Just these be nice. people out of the industry, we don't have a way to save our animals. And it's very important to get them saved. And on that note, the emergency clinics were like having a huge Well, the emergency problem. clinics are basically turning people away yeah. and left it. It is like completely critical and you're on your last breath. Like yeah. they don't let you in. Yeah. Unless you just, you're there banging on the door. Yeah. You know, if well, you call and say, this is happening, they're like, we can't see you. Well, half the people come running in, the dog just has diarrhea. Right. <laughs> well, the, yeah. Scott, don't start. We're not going back to that's poop. That's very true, we though. We passed on from poop. We're over poop, Scott. Oh, my God. No, but really, yeah, and it is you guys... Tough. Keep your animals well. Keep them as well as possible. Know their baseline. Watch them. And don't miss appointments. Yes. Call ahead to schedule. And yeah. don't be overly, 
I, I don't want to say like hypochondric, but like hypochondriacs, but like be conscientious sometimes. Like if it's kids, sometimes you're like, oh, the kid sneezed, he'll be fine. If it's the dog, it's like, oh my God, he yeah. sneezed once. Let's rush him in. Like give, give the dog a few hours, watch the dog. Don't overstress about things because sometimes if we get too concerned about something minor, just our stress can make right. it worse. And that can make it worse. And yeah. again, we do a lot of phone triage. Yeah. So if you're you able to like spend, therapists. seriously, yeah. you can spend 10 minutes just, you know, discussing the issue when things started, you know, what's been going on in the background. They just moved, they're redoing their kitchen, like yeah. whatever can be going on, you know, then talk them off a ledge and things kind of settle down. Yeah. And it buys them a couple days. The dog gets better. They don't have to come in, save the money, yeah. you know, just from a, a conversation. Yeah, no, definitely. All right. Well, I appreciate everything Andrea had to say. She had a lot of wisdom to impart. We're going to go to lunch with her and her husband, Bob, and I guess we're going to have to talk about old times. We'll try to keep Scott. And no more poop. <laughs> we're all poop. I, I we're, we're... This is the ground rule for lunch. No more poop talk. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of Oh, old God. <laughs> all right. And in the meantime, guys, keep it quirky. Be nice to the vets. Be Thanks, nice guy. to the techs. Be nice to the assistants. Be, Be nice kind. to the office staff. Be kind. Damn it. <laughs> Thanks for bringing the pig. <laughs> The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates. <laughs>